up space, um, I've spoken in this often in reference to um, installation because a lot of the work I do um, is creating installations. And, you know, so, sorry, this idea of taking up space is, um, you know, as a woman, as a queer woman, as a person with like Crohn's disease, so like with a sick body, um, as somebody who grew up, you know, uh, poor, like these are all things that sort of, you know, get implanted in you as to sort of like disappear, right? To not take up space. And so, um, you know, probably it was in 2001 when I did my first piece that was about sports called Unnecessary Roughness. Um, I just kind of really, I, I came to installation and, and to taking up space, so taking up um, the, whole, the whole gallery, right? So every inch of the wall is the work. And a big part of it was to kind of um, fight back against all these like, you know, sort of societal, you know, forces within the world that tell you if you're ABCD then you should sort of like, you know, be quiet and move to the side. And it's a politic that to this day I feel very strongly about. And, you know, it's quite true, if given space, I will take it up um, as a way to, you know, even whether I bring people in for collaborations or whether it's just my work or whether it's a work I create um, that then acts as a stage or some sort of space in which people will come and work with me. Um, yeah, it all sort of comes back to wanting to just you know, take who I am and, and my politics and my aesthetics and my interests and, and like my experience in the world and, you know, validate it, right? locker room with regards to muscle panic. Um, the piece that's in the courtyard I have uh, exhibited once before in Warkworth at this place called the Cow Palace and this is the first time I've had the opportunity to do sort of like a an offshoot of um, the hoop which is yeah upstairs in the courtyard. So a big part of muscle panic or perhaps what muscle, what muscle panic is um, 
is this rogue basketball team. So these girls that get together after dark and um, get together to play sports and to just, um, you know, it's about camaraderie and about this ritual and, and it's about tenderness, like the tenderness in sports that so quite often like we don't really, um, doesn't get a lot of airplay. So when people come into the space downstairs, I've, you know, played around with this idea of um, a locker room and so what every team kind of needs is a space that sort of nurtures this kind of camaraderie and where you come together after a game or before a game and, you know, you tighten each other's ponytails, you, um, you talk about what's go going on, you rub each other's muscles, you um, get prepared for the game, you get prepared for your lives, you sort of, it, it's a place that kind of incubates the tenderness that, you know, is a place, um, is a place to come together. And, you know, saying that, I'm like super cognizant of how for a lot of queer athletes, you know, or trans athletes, to be in a locker room of your chosen, you know, gender and to not be accepted, like it could, it can be a space of trauma. And um, so the space, you know, I'm just really interested in like what a space would look like that would be more inclusive and um, like accepting to a spectrum of genders and um, yeah, would yeah, just like speaks to that.